Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Glückauf das Große Kartenspiel, or as it's known in English, Colbaron's The Great Card Game. And is it a great card game? Well, I'm going to try and show you today in this two-player run-through, and right off the bat, I will definitely confirm it is great in terms of its table size. This thing is a devourer of tables. It is huge! It is great! You might say. But let's not talk about the size, let's talk about the gameplay. So, going to be playing a two-player game today. I am the white player, Jen is the blue player. In a two-player game, every, well, no matter the number of player, everybody starts with a deck of worker cards. And in a two-player game, some of them are removed. Your level four and your level five worker cards are removed. And also, we increase the number of rounds from five to seven. The game's a little bit longer, but we don't have quite as strong a workforce. But otherwise, the game plays the same at any player count. And as part of setup, we put out all these piles of cards, which must be thoroughly shuffled. This is a set collection game. So you got to shuffle these cards up, and we are now left with a world of possibilities in front of us. All this coal that we can dig out of the earth and then load onto these train cars, which will be pulled by these engines to parts unknown to complete contracts with different companies. But hey, if you're investing in companies by doing contract with them, why not get some shares in those companies so you can score more points? Or make some technological breakthroughs? Or uh, get some, um, some other objectives that will make you chase other point scoring opportunities? And then, of course, over here, there are core actions we can do. These cards represent the core actions of pulling coal out of the earth and putting it on cars. That's another thing. In a With more players, there would be another one of these cards as well, but we take one of the action cards out. And uh, right, so we're all set up. We're ready to go. I am the first player. How does the game play? Well, on your turn, super simple. You take a worker card and you um, apply it to any one of these stacks of cards to do whatever that is. This is a worker placement game where your workers come in the form of cards. I am the first player. And looking around at all the stuff that is available to me in this random setup, there, this is very valuable. This is a train car that is a wild card because you notice it's got all four symbols. This car only has one symbol, the, uh, you know, the blue castle, which means you can only load coal that has the blue castle symbol on it. So this coal could get loaded onto this car. This car has all four symbols, so any color of coal can be loaded. So this is very useful to have that kind of a wild card. So I think I want to grab that. Since I'm the first player, I'm going to take advantage of going first. I'm going to take a worker and put it up here, which means I'm activating this deck of cards, which means I take the top card off the deck. And, and in doing that, I reveal, hey, there's another card down here, which is, so now we've got a normal car that has a single symbol on it, which isn't quite as good as you know, these really powerful cards. Anyway, so now I'm going to take this card and uh, start building one of my three rail lines. I can put it here, here, or here, because I can have up to three trains that I am loading up ready to complete contracts over the course of the game. And because I got the wild card one, I can put it on any of the lines. If I would gotten this one instead that has this, uh, the, the, the red, is that a fox, I think? That means I could only put it down here, because here's the only place where there's a symbol for the fox. Um, so, this wild card means I can put it any place. And what the heck, looking around, I think I will put this card here on my middle line. And so I now have a train that I could load coal onto. But I've got to collect the coal first, and then I've got to use a loading action to load the coal onto this train. But I also, this train needs an engine, or else that coal is not going to go anywhere. So anyway, that was my first turn. I've started to build a train. Yay! Now it's Jen's turn. Now she has the exact same starting hand as me, which is, what is it? It's five ones, I think. Yeah, um, two twos and a three. And if we were playing with more players, we'd also have a four and a five. But in a two-player game, those got removed. So Jen is now going to take a card and put a worker to work as well. And like me, she's probably just going to take one of these single workers and put them someplace. The only place she cannot put this worker is over here. Because I've already gone here. If Jen wanted to get this particular car, because there's a one here, Jen would have to come with a two. Uh, a, a two card, and then Jen could grab this card. And then later on, if she wanted to get whatever underneath it, she could come here with a three, you know, one, two, three, and she could get whatever's underneath there. So once a space has been taken, other players can go there, but they have to send more workers than have gone before. And by the way, when you're going, you can't say, hey, you know what, this is a really good thing. I'm going to send a two over here. You have to count up sequentially. So first, you have to put a one, and then whatever card is underneath here has to be gotten with a two and then a three and so on. So you're kind of restricted by what you can do. So anyway, so what is Jen going to do? Well, um, 
She's certainly not going to go here because it's not like this car is particularly awesome in any way, shape, or form. She come over here to get her own car. She come over here to get a train engine. She come over here to get a contract because it doesn't do any good to get coal and load it on the cars if you don't have a contract. Hmm. Let's see. She could come over here and get a special power. You know, I know Jen. She loves technology. She's gonna send a worker over here and take this special power. Now, uh, this is like you know some kind of automation. And what this means is, Jen has basically t used one worker to get, um, this is a upgraded worker that can be used for value one, two, three, or four. So this will give Jen a lot more flexibility later in the game. All right, so, and this goes into her hand of workers. She could use this on her next turn instead of one of her regular workers. And again, because as you can see, you know, if somebody else wants to come here, now I have to come here with the two, Jen can use this as a one, two, three, or four. It's awesome. Anyway, so Jen went on ahead and grabbed that. Now it's my turn again. I've still got some guys. And... You know what? So if I want this uh, technology card, which is a bonus action, if I have this card, I send a worker off to do something, and I can play a bonus card to do a bonus action on my turn, which is pretty cool. But I'm not going to worry about that, particularly because I'd have to use a level 2 worker to come to this space since Jen's already been there. I'm going to send a level 1 worker over here and get myself another train car. And now, this one is more restricted. It um, you know, has the, the, uh, the rook, I guess, which means it can't come here, it can't come here, it can only come onto this line. And that is why I decided to put my wild card here, because I knew I was going to try and grab this, and it could only go on this line. So now I've got a line with two train cars on it. I could load two, um, two, two bundles of coal to get ready to ship off. All right, so that was my next turn. And I've, re I've revealed another rook. All right, so now it's Jen's turn again. And if she wants to get some trains, she's going to have to start paying more workers to get there because I've kind of uh, monopolized those. But you know what Jen is going to do? I think Jen, ooh, oh, yeah. Jen is going to make a bit of a saucy move. She's going to send a single worker over here. She's going to be the first to actually mine some coal in this coal mine. She could put it over here to get this double yellow, which means it has to be loaded onto a train that has a yellow icon, like, say, my wild card. Now, so J if Jen grabbed this, she'd be a bit worried about being able to load it because no yellow train cars have come out yet. So that's kind of a problem. But um, Jen's not going to come here. She's going to come here and get this coal because, first of all, this coal is worth two points at the end of the game if it gets shipped off. And it needs the rook. So Jen knows I want to take this because, hey, I've got a car that requires rooks. So Jen's going to take this. And then she's hoping later on to get this train because she'll be able to put this rook coal onto this rook train. So Jen has just mined some coal and it gets put over here in this slot waiting to be loaded onto a train. Although Jen doesn't have any trains yet. So that was her turn. Now it is my turn again. And I'm like, ah, she beat me to it. I would have totally snagged that so I could have loaded it onto this car. But now it's gone. So um, I could come over here and get this one, which is worth two points, because it can go onto my wild card car. Or I could get this one, which isn't worth points, but it counts as two bundles of coal instead of one. And it could also go onto my wild card car. Or I could come over here and get a contract. I could, uh, let's see here. I could get an engine. My car is going to need an engine. Hmm. Let's see. I could come over here and give myself an objective. <clears throat> so many options. So many options. Um, and, but right now, if I come here, 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 or here, I have to use a level two worker. Or alternatively, instead of using a level two worker to come here, I could use two level one workers because that would count as a level two worker also. Um, where do I want to go? Hmm. You know what? Um, my train needs an engine. Let's go on ahead and come over here with one and get myself a big blue engine and put it right here at the end. Now I could put this on a different, I could put this over here and then later on expand this train by putting cars, but I'm just going to try and get this car complete. So this is now a complete train. It's got two, uh, two lorries that I could put coal onto and an engine, but I still need to get coal and I still need to get a contract as well. And so I took that with a level one. Now it's Jen's turn again. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. And so remember, Jen wants this car. So she is going to be the first. She'll play a level two to build off top of mine and get this car. This car can only go on this line because there's no rooks here or here. So now Jen is going to be able to put this coal later on onto this car, which is going to be worth two points once it gets shipped off. But she still needs an engine. She still needs a contract. All right. So. My turn again. Now where am I going to go? All right. And so in doing that, I, Jen has just revealed a green car, which I could, a green are interesting because they can go on this line 
or this line. They're a little bit more valuable because you have a little bit more flexibility. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. But I do need some coal as well to load up. Um, so where am I going to go? I think I am. You know what? I'm going to come over here and give myself an objective card. This card means at the end of the game, I get two points for every stock certificate in this company that's represented by this symbol. Um, so, I right now, the stock certificates out here is the company that's represented by the Steam Liner. I need to get stock certificates that are represented by this. And so this is going to be something I'm going to be working on for the rest of the game. This stays face up. Everybody knows this is a goal I've got to try to get stock certificates that are like this. Although stock certificate is out right now. I just went ahead and did that because, hey, nobody else had come here and I was able to use a level 1 worker because we're running out of places to put level 1 workers. There's um, here and these spaces. So anyway, so I grabbed an objective and now I've got something I'm shooting for for the rest of the game. Now it is Jen's turn again. And let's see here. Does she want to... What the heck? She's going to come over here. She's going to give herself a contract. She now has a contract to ship a single coal to this factory, or the smokestack factory we call it, which will score her three points. And this is the easiest contract. It's only worth three points. Contracts can be worth up to 10 points if it's a contract for four coal, but this is a contract for one. So Jen's got this. She keeps this in her hand, waiting to use it later on. All right. And now it's my turn again. And let's see. So I'm almost out of ones, and I'm getting into twos and threes. But that's OK, because hey, to, go, to come over here, I would need to use a three. To come over here, I'd need to use a two. So where am I going to go now? Um, I've got a big old train and nothing to fill it up with. Let's go on ahead and uh, use my last number one to grab. Now, this coal isn't worth any points because it's a double. But, uh, oh wow, and look at that. All right, yeah, that's pretty cool. We're going to put that here. And um, later on, I will load this double onto my wild card because, again, the symbols match. And the nice thing is, I just revealed a double rook, which means I can put the double rook on this, uh, which is perfect. That's absolutely what I want. OK, nice. So there we go with that. Now it is Jen's turn. And don't forget, Jen's got this one. I mean, this guy that can count as a 1, 2, 3, 4. So she has a lot more flexibility about what she wants to go. She has this contract. She's still got some 1s and a 2 and a 3. And I think Jen is going to be, yeah, Jen is going to be the first to come over to this space. This is a very, very cool space. Although, every other space, the first time you ever had to go to it, it required a 1 because you were the first player to go. This space over here, you can see there's already a 1. So the first player to come here has to come here with a 2. And then afterwards, somebody else could follow with a 3, and then a 4, and then a 5, and so on. So anyway, so Jen's coming here. The action of this space is pick any stack of cards you want, draw 4 cards, and keep 1. So that's actually very, very cool because it gives you, uh, you know, you're not just limited to what you see on the top of these stacks. You can dig deeper and get, um, you know, something that you really, really want, which is what Jen's going to do. I think Jen is, she can pick any of these. She's going to pick the train stack. Instead of just being stuck with this yellow train, she's going to draw four and let's see. But here's what she's hoping if she draws four, she'll find a green train because then if she picks up this objective, this is two points for every green train over the rest of the game. Um, hmm. But I mean, if she doesn't find green and she just finds, well, who knows? I mean, then that's kind of a waste of being able to draw four. Maybe she should. Ah. Maybe, heck, she could come down here and draw four objective cards. Maybe she'll take this one that's on the top, or maybe she'll take one that works a little bit better for what she's thinking she's going to do. Um, or, let's see, this is interesting. Because she now has a contract with this particular factory right here, she wants to get shares in this factory stock. So she could draw four stock certificates because she doesn't want this one because she's not a, a lie. She doesn't have a contract with the steamship company. So she draws four here and finds this symbol. She'll be very happy. Yeah, I think she was going to go for the train, but she's a little bit nervous. If she doesn't find the green, then this isn't going to work out. She does have a vested interest in trying to find a stock certificate in this company. So I think she's going to draw four. And boom, she found it. Two, three, four. All right. 
Now, she's revealed this one. She's going to take one of the ones she drew, uh, keep it for herself, and then put the others at the bottom of the deck. Because she is already doing business with this company, she is very happy that she found a stock certificate in that company. Now, that stays face up. Everybody knows that Jen has a certificate. She has an investment in that company. These other cards, you can order them however you want, and then they go to the bottom of the deck. So Jen's pretty happy with that. She took a bit of a gamble, drew four, and got exactly what she needed. Because this means, at the end of the game, for every completed contract you've got with a company, you can match that to one stock certificate and basically get three more points. So, there we go. So Jen's pretty happy with that. Now it is my turn again. I'm starting to run out of workers here, folks. Where am I going to go? Um, and by the way, I have no ones, so I cannot send a worker here, here, or here because I would need to have a one. But I've used all my ones elsewhere. I've got twos and threes. So I could put twos on a lot of places. Heck, I could even put this three someplace, but I cannot put a one down because I've used all my ones. So all of these actions are dead to me now. So what am I going to do? Well, you know what? I think I'm going to take my three. And I'm going to do the same thing as Jen. I'm going to pick a stack. I'm going to draw four cards. And I'm going to pick one of them. So now, what stack do I want? Let's see here. Well, I know I want stock certificates that are representing this company. That means I also want contracts with this company as well. Although, actually, look at this. Oh, hey, yeah, hold on a second. I'm going to wait on a second. I'm not going to do this right now. Instead, I'm going to take this number two. I'm going to bring it over here, because there was a one, and now I put a two. And I'm going to get a contract with this company which happens to be the company that I have a vested interest in finding stock certificates for. So, yeah, it's all coming together. I'm, set, I'm really investing heavily in this company. All right, so that was my action. And then later on, I'll come over here and I'll try to actually get a stock certificate that matches that company. All right, so that was my turn. Jen's turn again. And she's running out of workers. So what is she going to do? Right, oh, she still needs an engine. Jen needs an engine. Um, because she'd like to load this coal onto this train and complete this contract, but to do it, she needs an engine. Here's the problem. Jen does not have a level two. She has a one, a three, and a one. You need a level two to come here because I've already come here. Now, Jen could use her wild card guy, but she wants to save him. So instead, Jen, oh, oh. So Jen could send a one and a one. That counts as a two. And Jen could get an engine onto here so that she could ship this stuff off. But here's the problem. This is the ship stuff off action. And for Jen to be able to trigger this action, she would need a one because nobody's come here yet. And if she looks over here, she just gave up all her ones. So if she wants to ship stuff off this turn, again, she could use her wild card guy, but that's hugely wasteful. She should use him for when she needs a four or something like that. So Jen was originally planning on getting an engine, loading it up, and shipping off this turn to um, you know before the first of, of seven shifts was up. But because of her workers, I don't think that makes much sense for her now. So instead, I think Jen's going to wait. Next, in the second shift, she'll get an engine. Instead, she's going to come over here and use one of her remaining ones to come to a load. Now, she could come over here. This would give her two or three loading actions that she would have to spend. Um, but instead, she's going to come over here, which gives her zero or one loading action. A loading action means for every loading action you've got, you move one bunch of coal onto a train. Um, this requires one action because there's one. This would require two actions because there's two on it. So Jen's going to spend one action and load this coal onto this train, and she can do that because the symbols match. All right, so Jen now has a train loaded up, ready to go, but she still needs an engine for it to take off. She's got the contract in mind, so this contract with this company only needs one. She just needs an engine now. All right, but she can't get an engine because she can't send a three here, she can't send a one here, and she doesn't want to use her special worker. All right, but anyway, so she'll, uh, she'll do that next round. My turn. I'm down to a two and a three, which is really starting to limit what I can do. Um, let's see here. Now, what did I do? I've totally forgotten what I did. All right, I, I got in the contract. Right, okay. I was going to use this three. Now, I'm going to do the draw four and pick one. And I would like a stock certificate that matches this company because I get bonus points for every stock certificate that matches that company. So let's draw four. Show me, show me. There it is, baby. Oh, yeah. All right, I got what I needed. Oh, that was, that was scary if I hadn't found it. You know, and I might not have gotten anything, and then I'd have a stock certificate in a company I didn't care about. But I got it, so I keep this public for everybody to know. And this stock certificate 
um, is worth two points to me at the end of the game because of my objective. These ones then go to the bottom of the deck. All right. And we've got another steamship company on the top of the deck. All right. Jen, she, it's her turn now. Now, if she wanted, she could spend this three plus a one to, to basically be four. So she could do that super action again. Hmm. A single one by itself can't go any place else. Uh, she could come here, but this is the action where she would actually use her contract and a completed train to go, but she doesn't have a completed train yet. So she can't do this action. She can't do this action because she has no coal to load, and a single one can't go anywhere else. So I think, yeah, Jen is going to do a four. So this, once again, by combining these two, she can draw from a deck and get what she needs. And remember, she was talking about this earlier, thinking about this earlier. I think she's going to do it now. She's going to draw from the train, hope to get a green, because then that means later on, she'll try to get this objective for green trains. One, there's a yellow, a black, a yellow, and a black. Ah, all right. Well, all right. So Jen doesn't really care. If any of these had been green, she would have taken it, because then later on, she'd try to get this, which means green truck or cars are worth points to her. What the heck? She'll take a black, and she'll put it at the end of this train. And then the other ones go to the bottom of the deck. All right. And now the reason she took a black train is because there is another black train on the top of the deck. And if you can, when you are getting trains, because remember, you can have up to three trains being built on the go, you want to match the color of the train if at all possible. Although, if you have an objective, you want to match that objective color. But as it worked out, so anyway. So Jen's thinking, hey, later on, she can get another black train because if you have multiple trains of the same color, you can trigger them all with a single action so you can become more efficient. All right, so anyway. So that was Jen's turn. It's my turn. I've got this two. This is my last worker. And I can't put him here or here, but I could put him any place where there's a one. So I could put him here, which would give me, oh, oh. If I put him here, this would give me the opportunity to load zero or one coal. But at Sword Chance, I took this double. I need two actions. So I need to come over here, but I can't come over here because there's no one for me to build on. So I can't load my coal this turn. All right. I could get another objective, which means I would want green trains. I could get this, which gives me a special power. I could get this. No, I can't come here because there's no one. I could come over here to get another train. I could come over here to get more coal. I could come. So those, those are my options because I can't come over here because I would need a five over here. No, I, yeah, I need a five, but I need a two, a two, a two. So where am I going to go? Uh, I do need more coal. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take this because I've got this, the blue rook car. Here is a double for blue rook. So there we go. So that means with two cars, I can get four coal on them. Now that's not a big deal. This contract I have only needs to deliver two coal, but there are contracts worth 10 points that require you to deliver four coal. So in the future, I'm going to want to go digging for one of those big, heavy four coal contracts and then load all these up and with one train, get a big 10-point contract. Anyway, so that was that. And then Jen... She's got to work. She could use this. She doesn't have to. And I think she's going to save this right now. So she's going to pass. Jen is the first to pass, which means, and you can pass whenever you want. Whenever you get to the point where you don't have workers that you can or want to use anymore, you can stop and you're out for the rest of the shift. Jen is out. And what do you know? So am I. We've finished the first shift. And now the thing, one thing that happens at the end of the shift is whoever is the last player to come to this action, which is Jen, I would have liked to have come here, but I couldn't, remember, for reasons I just explained. So whoever is the last player takes the shift token and is going to score one point at the end of the game. Plus, whoever takes that is going to be the first player in the next round. And so that's it. We've just finished the first shift. We're moving on to the second shift. Jen is the first. So now we take all our workers back. Um, D, D. And let's see here which is much easier with two hands, as you might imagine. Of course, when you're playing with more players, everybody just kind of splits up the duty. Everybody grabs a bunch of cards and sorts them out. So we get all our workers back. We are now moving on to the second shift. And that's it. Jen is now the first player. She can go to any of these places and um, get first dibs on stuff. So if you'd like to see that, uh, watch another shift or two. So you can start watching, um, you know, Jen actually ship some coal off and, and whatnot. You can hit the little I in the top right corner screen to go to the extended playthrough, or you can go to Final Thoughts and hear what Jen and I thought of the game and hear us compare it to its big brother, um, Gluk Alf, the original board game. So uh, either way, you can hit that I on the top right corner screen and make a choice in five, four, three, 
two, one.